Okay, I've been asked if you keep on uh, doing things in the world, drugs or whatever. Sinning. And, and sinning. Against the Holy Spirit, yeah. You know, against the Holy Spirit, if you can ever be saved. I believe that you can. Maybe eventually God won't deal with you, and maybe if that happens, you, you may not, but... You had two thieves on the cross. You had one here and one there. One says, if you be the son of man, yes, I will. The other one says, hey, we're the ones that done wrong. He's done nothing wrong. And you asked Jesus to remember him and see. At that point, he was still a, a thief. He was a sinner, something like that. And, but he realized, I believe if you somehow in your mind that Maybe the back of your mind that, you know, this is wrong, or I need to repent. Now, eventually, yes, God will quit dealing with you if you figure that you've made up your mind. But I think at some point that God will try to get you to come back or try to get you saved. It, it may take something out of the way to do it. Now, sometimes... It, it could be that it, it it could be your last chance, okay? But he loves you enough to, to keep working with you. But then eventually, yeah, he will. Let not, you he, he will let you go, and, and and then if you choose to go to hell, then he'll let you go there if that's what you want to do. And your sin will remain. And your sin will remain, but... It, it's not that you were a worse person. Mean, but that don't it, mean you'll never was, have a chance. Will God give you that chance? If you go to hell, you don't. He, he may not give you that chance, but I think some people, when they get down to their deathbed, Another story that comes to mind too. There was this guy that my a friend of mine in Beckley knew. He was a good Christian guy named I won't say his whole name, but his name was Roger. He knew an atheist guy, and he used to witness to him all the time. And the guy got in the hospital, almost in his deathbed, and they said, "Do you want the chaplain from the hospital now? This is a chaplain, a Christian chaplain, supposed to be a Christian chaplain from the hospital." He goes, no, I don't want your chaplain. I want Roger out. Well, that was actually his name, Roger. He goes, I want him to be, because I know that guy is a Christian. So this guy was an atheist up until his almost deathbed. And God, then God talked to him. So yes, it may be possible that you can't be repentant. It may be possible that you can't be saved, but that don't mean that God won't give you a chance, even down when it gets close to death. It could still turn you around, and it could still be His will that you be saved, because He knows your heart, He knows your mind, and there may be a point to where you realize, hey, yeah, I have been doing this. I, there was a time that I made up my mind. I don't, I mean, that I still want to do it. And then for a while, the Holy Spirit didn't deal with me. And then there may be a point in the road and say, well, you know, I don't know why I thought that all this time, but I do want to change. And then that's when the Holy Spirit will come back around and try to deal with you again. You know, as long as you don't stay in a fixed mind all the time. But you got to make up your mind whether you want to stay in that fixed mind or... But if you're going to bed at night and saying, you know what, God, I don't know why I'm still doing it. I don't, okay. Then, then when you're, you ask, call upon him, He'll listen to a sinner's prayer, or he'll listen to a repentant prayer. And that's when you know, when you feel like that's, that's got to go on, that that's when the Holy Spirit knows. Because that's you know right. that's, what, that's what's got to that's what's gotta happen. But you want to replore God as soon as you realize you have messed up. 
Well, yeah, you, you, you want to, but some people don't do it right away. But God will, God will hold up his hand all the time. Some people just want to smack it away. And eventually God will turn his back. But then they maybe he'll reach out one more time. If he thinks there's a chance that he can get to you, he'll reach out one more time. Yep. Yep. And you want to, and this is Cross Power, and we're talking July 30th, 2022, here in Charleston, West Virginia. But one thing you do want to be very uh, careful about sinning with pleasure or sinning at all, because sinning hardens your heart and it um, also will defect your spirit especially in the the um, time we're in intermingling with demons um, people don't think they're doing it but if you sniff a drug or you smoke a drug you could be um, intermingling with demons and you're sinning against the Holy Spirit and um, I'm talking from past experience that we have to acknowledge that and say to God, I'm sorry for sinning as soon as we realize what we've done. And um, then we must replore again and speak to the Holy Spirit and we must work for Jesus. You know, um, God is uh, the same as he always has been and we're his disciples. So. Um, we just want to tell you all the right thing because, um, you know, in my life, it has been um, trial after trial. And um, I have to tell you that what God has shown me that some people's sin is going to remain. They won't be, they won't, they'll be unrepentant on the day of judgment because they didn't come soon enough. They didn't rapport with God. They didn't sit and talk with God. Just like we listened to a concert or we listened to some sort of play or I was here for the whole thing. But then um, the people just pack up and they just ignore the fact that Jesus is, is surrounding them with tracks and with his people and wanting to talk with them. You see, every time we miss an opportunity, that's, uh, that's really bad because, uh, like Rodney said, God's reaching his hand out. So, um, you know, we've got to come soon, especially now. We don't have much uh, time that's, and what I mean by that is the grace age that still now is the time, the time period when Jesus sounds the trumpet in the sky, the last trumpet, the grace age is going to be over. And then those who, uh, those who didn't come to God, it's going to be over for them. There might be some that remain on earth that will still be able to hear, but more than likely that's going to be people in other countries, not the USA, because we've all heard the gospel over and over and over again. So if you're waiting until the seven year great tribulation to make a repentance prayer, don't do that. Because if you heard the gospel and you rejected it, I'm, I'm, uh, and you gave an excuse to Father God, I'm afraid it could be too late for you. So we're just trying to reach you before that time because we know that both of us have had a lot of difficulty getting uh, sin out of our lives. We'll have individual testimonies about that, but I'll tell you it has been uh, difficult because of the amount of uh, suffocation the devil's tried to use on me uh, uh, in my past with alcohol and drugs and he will continue to put it out I mean like my mother said um, here we live not too far but uh, from here and my mother said you know what it would be so easy for for anybody to walk outside of our our door and get a hit of meth that's how easy it is to sin these days. And she's a, she doesn't do that drug, and that wasn't her sin in her life. But she said, if I did something like that, it would be so easy. What she's saying is, she's saying, you know, look how easy it is for somebody to sin. 
and to use that drugs and and she's a good Christian now and and just tells it as it is and so we really want to protect our temple because what we put in this temple could defile it and it could harden our spirit our soul our heart but don't be don't take this as as you know um a fear you know just take this and get on your knees and pray you know don't take it as a fear message we're just trying to to relay to you that the times are unusual unlike any other time except for maybe the days of the days of noah i mean especially i don't think that they had the the one particular drug back in the days of Noah, and that's methamphetamine. I mean, they've perfected a certain type of drug to shoot your dopamine a thousand times higher than it's supposed to be, and then they do this artificially, and then it's hard for you to enjoy other activities once you've done this type of drug, although God is the healer, and I, I can tell you that he will heal, and uh, uh, if you persevere, he will preserve your soul in ways. And a lot of those ways, too, is just getting rooted in your scripture and your history, knowing the history that these things that we're seeing is not a normal time. It's not normal. I mean, it's not normal for, um, you know, people to... Co uh, conjure up wicked spirits and and to make a certain type of artificial drug that can shoot your dopamine and serotonin above above uh, levels that have never been known before. I mean, we have to recognize what this is, and this is the devil trying to kill off as many souls as he can. So we're just here, and we're here to pray for you, and we're here to pray for our own uh, self uh, preservation and um, ask God to, to preserve our souls. Um, and we're coming as, as free will agents as well as free will vessels to the cross and asking God for mercy because we need mercy as well. Um, you know, I believe that had I known this time was going to come, as swiftly as it came, I would have been much more careful in my life. And I was very, very, at times, very careless. And I mean, very careless. You know, um, I have testimony after testimony where God reached his hand out. And, um, you know, if he hadn't, it, it, I could have died and gone, um, you know, I, I could have died and got, gone to hell because I wasn't really um, living for him 100%. But yet, you know, I had a desire. Like Rodney says, you must have the desire to change. You've got to have uh, the, the desire to say, okay, I put the sin away. You can't lie to God. You have to say, okay, God, I make the turn right now to you, okay? Like some people's problem is money. Well, you've got to have a desire to say, okay, God, you know what? I, I must give you 10% of all my earnings. It's not mine. And if you promise God 100%, which is really what God is owed, I mean, there's controversy to that, but God told the disciples to go out and only to take one handbag and not even a, a change of shoes. He told them to go out and take um, just what they were wearing and one coat uh, and um, they went out and they stayed at people's houses who would who would welcome them. Now we know it's the 21st century and I know you have to be a little more careful of your surroundings and this and that, but you're still, if you're keeping back money for the kingdom of God, you need to confess it and you need to give now. Um, you need to just give what you've earned back to God because you can't, uh, remain with that or you won't you you'll either lose some of your reward or you know it will it won't be used for the poor people and then God would have to converse with you on uh, you know on other other issues that would happen in your life but um, some people have really had a difficult time uh, with that one and thank goodness Jesus just spoke to me in my right ear that he is our attorney when we sin so you know just give out of the uh, your heart 
because there's so many people that need help. Uh, there's a lot of unworking missionaries because people won't just fund them, and I'm one of them. I'm working in my town, but I could be working so many other places. Just because people don't really believe that, you know, it's that it's needed. And it is needed. You know, I, if I was funded, I would go serve in other cities. And I know Rodney would too. So, you know, please. And, and we want people that have the money to fund us. You know, you may be a minister yourself, but you've gained millions. And we don't have any money in our account right now. And that, I mean, as shameful as that is to say, we don't. And, you know, we're out here with tracks, free tracks. And uh, taking the last bus home at 1115 because we believe in God's will for our lives. So if you can, you know, um, you can go to PayPal if you have it now. You know, don't give me your last $10 or whatever. But, I mean, if you're one of these ministers and you listen to this, you know, go to PayPal, Nurse, N-U-R-S-E-A-N-N, 2017, Nurse Ann. 2017 at gmail.com or, or excuse me at paypal this one will be at paypal at paypal and uh you can fund us and or you could send me a private email i just gave you my email and you could uh, get to know us you could replore us and then you would learn that we are very very truthful on fire high-spirited people for Jesus Christ and missionaries uh, and we want to do God's will whether here other cities or other countries okay thanks for watching